Hi there, my name is Shelley Grafstein and I'm the host of our event called Parenting Your Teen Through Difficult Times. I'm a life coach and I specialize in coaching moms whose kids are going through various, um, various avenues to discover who they are, mostly discovering different religious avenues and, and where they're holding with Judaism. And I notice talking to moms that they're I don't know if I can use the word oblivious, but I'm going to use the word oblivious. I know it's not politically correct, so forgive me if I offend anybody, but there's so many issues that our teens are dealing with on their own, and they have nowhere to go for help because the parents don't want to recognize that it's an issue. They don't know how to support the kid. They don't know what to do, what resources are available. So I put together this webinar, this conference, to introduce you to some of the experts in the field. They're going to give you some advice, what to look for, things that you can start implementing right away, and they're always available for a private consultation and to help you in any way they can. So I'm so excited to introduce Rachel Weinstein. I've heard about Rachel for years. I finally hopped on a call with her and <laughs> I, fell, I fell in love with you. What can, what can I say? She's got Thank one you. of these personalities that yeah. is just all heart. Really, it was really such a pleasure. So Rachel is a licensed social worker. She holds her master's in social work. She has worked with children and adults in residential psychiatric facilities, schools for developmentally um, disabled, nursing homes, hospitals, and hospices. So she has done a lot. And now she is going to give us her take on parenting kids who don't fit in the box. Okay. Um, so, oh, I wanted to say, sorry, she's been working with the LGBTQ community, individuals and families in the from world here in Israel and in America. And she has her own story in, in that avenue. I don't know if she's going to address it at all today, but she's an expert in that area also. We talk about not fitting in a box in the from world <laughs> that is totally out of the box. And Rachel has a saying... Everybody has a story that needs to be told and needs to be heard. And that's really, I would say, her like slogan that she lives by. <laughs> so, Rachel, how did you get into social work and, and this field in particular? Okay, well, um, you're going to give me a big head. Um, <laughs> so uh, how did I get into social work? I, I, you know, sometimes they, if you've ever seen, you know, Facebook quizzes, you know, what did you want to be? When you when you grew up and you know different uh, different people will ask what did you really want to do um when i was seven i really wanted to be a psychologist wow um i really did i, I just did um i as i got older i realized i wanted to do social work because with with so much respect to every psychologist in the world it's a lot of years of schooling um and i wanted to be able to you know not be in school for that many years, um, but I, which makes social work sound terrible, but it's not. Um, I did, uh, I did a two and a half year program. It was, I worked and I went to school. Um, I was a psychology major in Stern College, YU, and, um, and I went back to school after I had my third baby wow. and um, graduated when I had my fourth. And, um, and then I was, th this is social work is, it's who I am. You know, I think every, every cluster of friends has that person who is the social worker or the therapist in the group. And I was kind of always that person. It, it just came really naturally to me and I, and I love it. So I mean, that's why I jumped right in. We can tell you love it. You just wear it on your, you wear your heart on your shoulders. Okay. Yes. So tell us <laughs> what do we as moms do when we have a kid who does not fit in the box? <sighs> Like I told you, the when we when we met, you know, I, I I've said I've been known to say multiple times in multiple different areas of my life that, um, you know, if I, I none of us, my entire family, we don't we don't fit into a box. We we never got a box. And maybe once it looked like a circle, um, but there was no box. There is there is no box. I always thought it was interesting that even in the the um, we're from Chicago and we're now in Beit Shemesh and in the um, community directory our last name is very obviously jewish weinstein it looks like weinstein it's weinstein and i thought it was quite metaphoric that there was only one weinstein in the entire book it's just such yeah. an obvious name at least in chicago the only other weinstein was my sister-in-law she's not one anymore um and i thought wow i think the world can only handle one group of us <laughs> um so so out of the box i think i think first of all you have to be aware 
you know, what, what the box is, if you, if you have a box, because we all have expectations for our children, for our families, whether we say them or acknowledge them or articulate them. Just, I think it's important. I'll just share. I have, I have four children and I have uh, two of my kids are married and I have two grandkids. So I don't consider myself a parenting expert, but I, I, I have been doing this parenting thing for a few years. Um, and so I think it's important that when your kids start to, to do something different, look different, act different, whatever that means, A, it's very relative because what's different in my house may be totally, sorry, my coffee, not at all different in somebody else's. Um, and also you have to be able to come to terms with how important is this box that you're, that you're talking about. In our home, um, we always think a little differently. We don't, we tend to in general, not tow much of a line. Everyone tows a line to an extent because we all have to share the planet. Um, but we, I have very thoughtful kids. I have very intuitive kids. And so they were always a little bit um, harder for some of the teachers to handle because they, they asked, they wide people to death, but why? Mm -hmm. why I have a few like that's, that too <laughs> you know that's that's the way it is but but why um I think questioning is is wonderful and I think I mean it will drive you up a tree I'm just going to say it like it is because sometimes it's just why because it just has to be but I think it's important to first of all hear that your kids hear what what it is they're saying what is what is their why um, but I think it's also, again, really important to understand what, what box are you working within? And for us, <clears throat> um, when our third child um, came out as gay, when he was 15, 15, 16, um, I was very, you know, with, uh, I, this will be a pun, but I don't mean it to be funny. There were a lot of boxes we were all coming out of. Um, and it was very, very challenging and very, um, it was very difficult where, in a much better place now. I've talked about that story a lot um, in other places. I'm happy to speak to anyone about that um, because it is a challenge um, to say the very least. Um, but but our, whole, our whole family dynamic, it, it changed and it stayed the same. And so what, when you say you're, you know, you're out of the box or the family is out of the box or your child is out of the box. It assumes that there's a box that anyone has to be in. You don't have to color within the lines. Um, and I think it's important to be able to understand that you can use different colors. You don't have to color within the lines. You can make new lines. And that just because something always has been doesn't mean it always has to be. There are a lot of ways to see the world. And I think we need, we owe it to our children to let them discover the world the way we did. Mm. We, you know, we may not think exactly like our parents, you know, we may not, we may think exactly like them, but we have different experiences and we have different flavors to what we do and the music we like and the shows we watch or won't watch, the, the language we'll use or we won't use. It's, we get to put our own spin on everything we do and our kids deserve that too. Yeah, oh, excellent. I know as a mom, when I made my box bigger, much bigger, because I came as like Haredi Canadian, and I came here and I realized I did not fit at all in the Haredi Canadian society, mm -hmm. and I right. or, or Haredi Israeli society even more. Um, and I, I just well, originally I allowed this kind of behavior, and then I realized, you know what, my kids are individuals; they're so different than I am. Right. And as right. I made the box bigger confrontation judgment unhappiness just like it was like it was a paradigm shift of everybody could be free to be who they were and the stress levels just plummeted and happiness just soared so it right. was so it's yeah it's, it's so powerful so right. one of the questions we were talking about was how do you recognize when your child is pursuing their path that it's not they're not pushing you away like that that paradox of a kid finding who they are and it's not a personal slap in the face to you like how do you um right reconcile that i i think that part of and i mean i remember this very clearly from man oh man when i was a, a teenager i i enjoyed being just as an aside i enjoyed being one big conundrum i had a I was a straight A student who wore a denim jacket. I was almost going to bring it here. Um, I still, I still have it—a denim jacket with the screaming face of Pink Floyd painted on the back, and Metallica and Iron Maiden patches. But I was straight A student. Um, I, I enjoyed being, I enjoyed being the kid that people might have gone, wait, 
who did well on the test? Wait, <laughs> not her. Well on the test? <laughs> no. And then I wore that when I became when I became religious. So I wore that jacket with long skirts. I loved, I thrived on the energy of being unpeggable. Looking back, I realized that some of my teachers were probably looking at me and going, ah, adolescence, and not thinking, no, not thinking at all, of, not remotely giving as much thought to it as I was. But there was a pride in being different. Um, I still enjoy some Iron Maiden and some of the old stuff, Metallica. Um, but I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not living a you know, <laughs> heavy metal lifestyle, just saying that fresh me up. Um, <laughs> by, by any stretch, by, I can hear my kids laughing in my head now. Um, um, but uh, so a couple of things. One is that with adolescence, I think, and I'm not an adolescent, you know, expert here, but I think that part of, it's par for the course for children to push their parents away. Kind of like when kids are walking and, you know, like babies are learning to walk and they waddle that those first few steps. And then they look back, like, are you still there? Are you still going to catch me? So as adolescents, they're going to run a little, they're not just going to waddle. They're going to fly. They're going to run, but they need to know that their parents are still there. So if your child is pushing you away, because that's kind of what they do, it's called that, you know, separating and then coming back together and then separating someone coming back together. Um, if your child is dressing differently, um, talking differently, has different friends, ones that maybe maybe you love, maybe you don't love, maybe you're a little spicier, different, mm -hmm. funkier, whatever your word you want to use, than you had hoped their friends might be, before you jump, before you pass, to go, no, because as soon as you say no to everything, oh, Pandora's box, you know, there's no, there's no lid to the box, everything is flung open hear what they have to say. Because the child who likes really loud music, that may be their one rebellion. That may be their one out. So maybe they're listening to, if you know, if in your home, um, you know, you much prefer your children to listen to, let's say religious music. Let's say they're listening to, um, and stuff that sounds like religious music, you know, more of the ay 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 older <laughs> yeah, type yeah. stuff, okay? If they're, you know, um, you know, if, if they're listening to something with a heavy drum beat or an electric guitar that certainly would make my heart swoon, you know, but it's still the right lyrics. They're not running away from Judaism. They're not not religious. They're doing it differently. What speaks to one heart and one soul is going to speak to a different one. Um, and I think we need to, again, to recognize that. I think the worry signs come up if you start to notice that they've all of a sudden stopped going to school or they're um, not taking care of their hygiene or they're mouthing off perhaps more than they might be that you, you know, like you need, I'm not saying let your kids do whatever the heck they want and, you know, let them, you know, curse at you. God, I hope no parent, God, I hope no parent allows that. But if a little bit of sarcasm that you remind them that's not what, you don't do that here. If they push boundaries further, bigger, the, the pushback is even more intense. If it's different, if it's really different, then you need to be asking what's going on. What is happening? Are their grades dropping? Are they nowhere to be found? Do you tell them curfew is whatever hour and they come home whenever the heck they want to? That's when I think you need to be aware of what well, you always need to be aware, um, but that may be signs of what's happening, what's what's going on. So, here. so who do you ask that question to? What's going on? Do we sit down with the kids? Like, what would you say as a social worker? Do we do our own due diligence and spy on them, check their phones, or do we sit down and say, "Listen, I noticed that we're fighting a lot more. Or you're out until five in the morning." Um, like, right. what do you, what's your best? advice to a mom who sees their kid going down testing boundaries more than they would like i think first and foremost talk to your child we we sometimes tend to think that children aren't people mm -hmm. and I, I don't know about you i don't know about anyone who who you know was listening to this but one of the things i detested as a kid was being spoken over being spoken about while i was right like hello i'm yeah. right here why ask me i'll tell yes. you if i like mashed potatoes or not why are you not asking me you know um i'm not a project i'm a person so if your child is you know just not listening to the rules or whatever it is you can sit down with them like a human human being to human being sweetie whatever your word is for them you know honey bunch whatever kid whatever your 
your sweet word is for them or just i don't know their name that works <laughs> you know? too you know that's uh, we we we, uh, we do lots of nicknames in my house so that's where it came from um what's going on just tell, t- talk straight don't try to be don't go into lecture mode see when you don't come home you don't get enough sleep and that'll that's really not healthy okay i'm already yeah. i'm just yeah. towards myself i don't want to hear that um you know yanko what's going on <laughs> you never used to not come home when we said it's time you never used to not call if you were going to be late what gives what's going on talk to them in a language that they understand don't if you are a college professor don't speak to them like that speak to them like a parent speak to them like you know right here eye to eye um it doesn't need to be about guilt you know you worry me i'm sick over this but i think it is okay to say i love you and that's why i worry you really cannot tell your kids i love you too much i have tried it doesn't work they may roll their eyes and go i I know you love me that's fantastic i will take an eye roll over not telling your kids (laughs) any day of the week they need to hear just talk just talk to them straight i i love you it makes me i'm really i get nervous and if you're having fun tell me what you're doing i don't need to know every detail i don't need to know what every word i don't need to know you know if you put Mentos in a Coke bottle, I don't know why that came to mind. I don't need to know that you did something stupid. I do need to know if you're not being wise with your choices. Like if you're talking to people that maybe you need to be on, you need to be aware of, you need to be, you need to know your own boundaries. I need to know if you're at a party and someone is passing something around. I want to know that because that's important because I care about you because I want you to, I want you to be safe. There's a big difference between I want you to be safe because I really, because, because I love you, because you're my kid, then you can't do that stuff, right? I mean, For sure. I don't, it enters the heart then, you know, it, it goes into the heart right. much more than being lectured to. So right. how flexible when the mom's speaking, I have to cough, <coughs> when the mom's speaking to the child, how flexible should she be? Because I know some of the moms I deal with, it's my way or out. How, like, I, I I'm totally not into that, that being totally rigid, but how right. flexible, because there's rigid, like a, a, an iron, and then there's flexible, like spaghetti, like, where's the happy medium, or is there no happy medium? There has to be a happy medium, and it always depends on the situation. Look, if, if my child was going, I mean, my kids are a little older, but if my, my child was going to a party, and they said, there's only going to be pot at the party. Oh, well, you're still not going, <laughs> you know, it's not like, well, at least it's not Coke. No, 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 no. Drugs. No. Unless you're talking, I had a Motrin. I took Motrin for a headache. There's no drugs. That's the end of the discussion. Certain things are off the table. Drugs, drinking. I know, look, I, I was, I was no angel as a kid. And perhaps that allowed me to have a little bit more insight because I did some stupid things when I was a teenager. I, I, deserve to get in trouble perhaps for some of them maybe mm-hmm. i'm a better actress than i thought or was, when I was a kid. <laughs> um but but if the if the lines of communication aren't open when there isn't a struggle it's going to be much harder for your kid to come to you when there is a struggle so if you know i think this even this starts even before the you know the the uh-oh happens mm-hmm. hey how was your day What's going on? What's going on with your friend? I saw she got a haircut. She looks great. Tell her I said, be involved in their lives. It's not, you can't, being a parent isn't just, you know, I'm, I'm, you're, you're not a a traffic cop. You know, things are fine until they're not. You need to be there when things are fine. You need to be there when things are great, when things are amazing, when things are hard, when things are sad. You need to be a human being. You need to set boundaries because kids without boundaries make, um, fairly difficult adults um, and really, really insensitive human beings overall. Um, You need to set boundaries. You need to let them know that there are rules and that there are expectations. You know, um, I'm not saying, you know, you know, you must clean the house and, you know, no, none of our children are Cinderella, you know, but, but they also, they need to be children. They need to be able to explore and do the things that they need to do, but they also have to know that home is really 
home, not just the place where my other pair of shoes are, where I can go to my mom, I can go to my dad, I can go to my guardian or my grandma or whoever it is that is responsible for me who will be there when I have something so amazing to share and will also be there when I'm pretty sure the world's about to fall down around me. They, they, need, they need us to be present in their lives. Um, but in terms of, you know, what are, what are the boundaries? It depends on the situation. You know, can I, can I go out when the first time, the first year we were here, we were in Israel, I had no idea that the culture in Israel with teenagers was that, you know, first of all, Ooh, that was a head trip. Um, you know, the kids were allowed to go out all night mm -hmm. at my house. They weren't. And I had a very angry 14 or 15 year old young man who, oh, he was livid with me, but that was fine. Cause I wouldn't let him hang out all night long unsupervised, even at 14 or 15 on Lagba Omer. Nope. Why? because it's not safe for you. You're too young to be out all night. And I will end up combing the streets to find you. So no, you need to be, you can go out until whatever time it was we agreed on, mm -hmm. and then you will come home. But my friends will make fun of me. That is fine. You will come home. You want a, an extra half hour? I could do that. We can, we can wiggle room, you know, it's okay. but out all night, end of discussion. And he was grumpy and he was upset with me and it was unpleasant. But when I put my head down on that pillow, I still remember this. When I put my head down on that pillow, I was comfortable knowing that he was safe. He was in my supervision, which that's kind of my job. And um, maybe the party that he wanted to go to worked out just fine, but I wasn't willing to take that chance. Not because I didn't trust him, because everyone's child is wonderful, but a group of unsupervised teenagers at night with nary a parent in sight mm -hmm. is, is asking for trouble. Yeah. And as much as I love it when parents say, my child would never, I'm telling you right now that every single one of our children would. That's why there are rules. <laughs> my kid would never, yes, they would. Yeah. Your angel, my angels, I think my kids are the most perfectly imperfect human beings on the planet. But would they? Yeah. 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 yeah hear, but that's just hear. real. It's yeah. not, it's not a, it's not a judgment value. It's real. It's real. Just real. So, Be real. Yeah. I love that. Be real. Now you can see why I love her, right? She's so great. <laughs> Rachel, where can people get a hold of you? So um, they can get a hold of me at my phone number, 052 874. Five five eight nine. Um, I feel like one of those uh, car commercials from when I was a kid. You know the, the number. Um, I have my email is r weinstein spelled like Weinstein, one word. R Weinstein M S W at gmail.com. and I have a web page Rachel Weinstein M S W dot com. Excellent. Okay, uh, I'm gonna post Rachel all of those. Yeah. I'm gonna post all of those oh, underneath. And yeah, a few other places and all that good stuff. I, I can I just add one. Last yeah, for sure. Thing? Or we okay. Go ahead. So I, I had met with a um, oh, yes. I'd met with a with a young lady um yesterday, and I had shared with her. I said, you know, I'm gonna be doing this this talk, speaking with with parents about um, you know, what do you what do you do when your kids out of the box? How do you how do you handle that? And I'll is a, a young lady who for different reasons is out of a box. Um, I, I want to also add, I'm sorry, because I'm Jewish, I have to add more time, um, that that out of the box is very relative to every family. So for certain families where, you know, the guys wearing a blue shirt instead of a white shirt is really rebellion. Again, you have to weigh the, you know, how, what, is this worth my energy? Is this worth the fight? Does wearing a different color, does that really change the, the, how much they believe in God or not? Is me pushing that they must wear white end of discussion? What is that going to get me from, for a kid who is pushing back? If the only thing I need to give is let him wear blue and he still wants to go to Minion and Davin and woohoo, yay God, maybe it's worth it. You know, I think people need to really you know, take, uh, taking accounting and pros and cons. Anyway, one of the things that this young lady said, and it's truly out of the mouths of babes is that, um, she had this incredible line. I'm just going to find it real quick. If there's no room for failure, there's no room for growth. Ugh, right. It's not my phrase. I will not take credit for it, but it's, it's a client's phrase. And 
one of the things she said is that when parents let their kids know, can I'm paraphrasing, can model for their children that they make mistakes because we do make mistakes. When parents can admit we, that they made a mistake, you know what, that friend that I was really freaked out about, she's a really good kid. I'm really sorry, I thought differently. It's okay to make mistakes, you know, or the person who, man, I really thought that teacher was gonna be amazing. And I'm so sorry that they've been so horrible to you. Make, it's okay to be vulnerable to a, to, to a, a healthy extent. And obviously that's where help sometimes needs to come in in front of your kids. If you are the, you know, if you are the wizard of Oz, if you are the infallible expert who knows because you gave birth or, or helped parent a child or whatever it is, your kids are going to see right through that. Your kids will see so right through that. It, it's, it, it will be horrifying. I'm just telling you now. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to say, you know what? I'm confused too. I, I don't know how to play this one. Um, you know what? Mom needs help. I'm going to speak to a therapist. I'm going to, I'm going to speak to the teacher and find out what we can do. Um, let your kids see that being vulnerable, that asking for help is okay. You don't have to have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. We can't expect our kids to, especially when we don't know all the answers, because for every parent that loses their, their, you know, loses control, we've all lost a little control sometimes for every parent that is going, I don't know what to do with that kid is also a scared parent going, oh dear God, I'm afraid I'm going to lose them. Admit that to yourself. Admit that if you are fortunate to co-parent, share that. And you can sometimes even tell your kids, you know what, this whole teenage thing scares me a little bit. So we're going to ride this wave together. I'm still the mom. You're still the kid. That, that rule didn't change. But we're going to ride this together and we're going to talk about it. And we're going to respect each other so that I can hear you and you can hear me. Such good advice. And I love that gem from your, from your client. Wow, that is so good. Yeah. So everybody reach out to Rachel if you need her. I hope you liked the interview as much as I did. And we'll see you on the next call. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. One second. Ah, recording stopped. Hold on.